this is Dr. Audrey Drummonds with Interior Coverings Ministry. And today uh, we're going to go into the book of Ezekiel. Um, I had mentioned a, a verse in Ezekiel that I thought was in chapter 42, but it's actually Ezekiel 22:30. And I feel like there's relevance of, of what's going on back during Ezekiel's time that we can apply into our own lives today, uh, not only where you're at, what country you're at, but all the way around the world. We're in the age of information and um, lots going on. Go to Ezekiel chapter 22. <clears throat> I apologize for my voice. Um, uh, as I've mentioned before, I'm going through radiation and chemo treatments. For a, a, it's a stage four cancer. I've had it for about 10 years now. And uh, I'm working through it, but it does affect uh, my vocal cords uh, with the, the medications and stuff. But I want to get these messages out, so I, I ask for you just to bear with me. Ezekiel um, chapter 22 and 30. And I also apologize if I'm slow and I lose my train of thought as well as... Um, uh, trying to keep my thoughts clear, or if I repeat myself, please, again, just bear with me. In verse 30, or chapter 22, verse 30, it says, And I, meaning God, searched for a man among them who should build up the wall and stand in the gap before me for the land that I should not destroy it, but I found no one. If we go back up, to verse 29, what was going on here? What was a description of the land that, that God was making this statement? The people of the land have practiced oppression and committed robbery, and they have wronged the poor and needy and have oppressed the sojourner without justice. Do we have a lot of that going on right now around the world? Not just specific areas that may be on the news right now, but this has been going on for a long time, and it becomes very, very weighty. It's not only in other countries. I'm in the United States, and it's right here in the United States. There's a strong oppressiveness, and we try to, to work it out by you know, switching parties, by elections, but there's so much um, partial truths and um, other things I, I don't want to get into politics, but just other things that is not the fullness of God's kingdom being manifested in the potential that it has. And the oppressiveness, it just becomes weighty. My question is, where's the church in all of this? Where's the body of Christ? Why are they not rising up? Why are they not, not standing in the gap? Where is this one man that that God is talking to, and he's talking to Ezekiel. This one man is Christ. But we right now have the ability, because we are in Christ, to do the greater works than what, than what Jesus did. Jesus is looking to come alongside us to be that second witness by speaking his word into the land. The challenge that I see often with what we refer to as the church today is an awareness of your salvation. Jesus Christ died once and for all. And, and that all is all. In Luke 3, 6, it refers to that all flesh shall see the salvation of God. All flesh. Not just those that receive uh, Jesus as their Lord and Savior, but all flesh. However, then there's a sanctification. See, if Jesus died once and for all, he didn't leave any out. That doesn't necessarily mean that the sanctification of the awareness has taken place. That's the being born again. That's the whole John 3.16, where Nicodemus comes and Jesus is saying, you must be born again. You have to be aware that you are a king's kid. You have to be aware that God is your father. And how that happens is not by your own awareness, not by a church coming or a church member or a Christian saying, here, say this, 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 and this. Jesus never did that. 
You realize that? Jesus never once went to anybody and said, you need to say a sinner's prayer or else I'm going to send you to hell. He never said anything like that. It's presence. And when the presence of the Lord is radiating through you, as it did with Peter, I did a teaching on, on the Apostle Peter and his writings in Second Second Peter, as it did with him, and it radiates, creation groans and is migrates to that radiation. It it wants to it be drawn. It's hungry and thirsty for that. And in doing that, we can start changing the world. But we have to know who we are first in Christ. And that is the buildup of the children of God to the mature in Christ, to the bride of Christ. It's a maturing stepping stage that the church should be functioning. Well, by now, after 2,000 plus years, the church should st be manifesting <laughs> as brides, as wives of Christ. Yes, we're going to have more people coming in as children, as newborn babes coming in, and their awareness, and they, they want to soak up um, what the Bible says. But if we keep on teaching people kind of a what I refer to as a Christian psychology, be a good person, hang in there, don't, don't steal, don't cheat, kind of the Ten Commandments things, and we're not bringing them into the maturity of who they already are, and they're waiting for all the goods, the better goods, on the other side. You get a little bit of God here and you get all the rest on the other side. We're not any earthly good for the kingdom. The Holy Spirit rules and reigns within us. The Holy Spirit is not by himself because it, it is a three in one. So if you've got the Holy Spirit, if you're spirit filled and you're being led by the Spirit, you have Jesus with you as the resurrection Christ, and you have God with you. You've got the, the God head as your head here, the Christ head. To rule and to reign, it needs to line up with the heart matter. So what's happening here, that he's searching for a man, he finds Ezekiel, but this is more than just a man. He's searching for Christ. He's searching for the last Adam, and he couldn't find it in the land. And the oppressiveness was so, so strong. Prophecy needed to go forth. So as we go through, and I want you to turn to Ezekiel 37. This had been, when I was a little girl, this was always my favorite chapter. I was um, a pastor's kid. And I may have said this before, when I was little and had to sit on the, the front pew with my mom, um, if my father ever pre preached on the dry bones, that just resonated in a two, three-year-old little girl's spirit. God was working in me at that time. And now, if I hear a pastor or teacher, and they're preaching from Ezekiel 37, I want to know if they're preaching of a someday, or are they preaching for a now, where... God is having a conversation with Ezekiel. And as, as he does, he's asking Ezekiel in verse 3, Son of man, can these bones live? And I answered, O Lord God, thou knowest. He's in the middle of a valley of dooby dooby down dry bones. There's no skin, there's no flesh. A valley area like this is like the most depressive area. You have sunk as low as you can. You are in that depressive state. You have no hope. You don't know which way to turn. You can't see because you're surrounded by mountains all around that are just engulfing you. We would refer to those as issues. Maybe a divorce, maybe a death, maybe a, an illness, a sickness. Maybe, you know, you just got kicked out of your country. Maybe you are in, in an escape mode. Maybe it's a COVID issue. All of these things are such great mountains that are tormenting a fear that you can't even, you can't see the love of God. You can't find God at all. That's what dry bones is all about because bones carry the, 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 the makings. I apologize. Um, I want to say the morrow 
uh, of formation of new blood cells. So we're talking about the, the housing for new blood cells to be able to form, but they're so dry, new blood cells are not forming for the body. The, the blood cells are what are carrying the oxygen. They're carrying the breath. They're carrying the life. The life of the flesh is in the blood. So if you've got dry, dry bones, Christian or not Christian, the blood of Jesus is probably not flowing pretty strong. And you're, you're making it only by your natural means of your own flesh and your common sense. But the Spirit of the Lord is not guiding you because fear has put so much oppressiveness on you. And that's what's on our land. So as, as Ezekiel finds himself in this vision and in this place, God tells him to prophesy over these bones and say to them, oh, dry bones. Why didn't God say to them? Why didn't God just speak to those bones? Because the Spirit of the Lord was speaking to Ezekiel. And Ezekiel referred back in glorification. God, you know. You're right. I do know. And because I know, I want you now to speak. And as you speak and you prophesy and say to those dry bones, those dead bones, this is not... Um, a cemetery. This is an oppressiveness of, of um, people that are alive, people that are naturally alive, you know, in their natural bodies, but they are so spiritually dead. They may know that they're going to heaven, but they are so spiritually dead that they're not any earthly good. Hear the word of the Lord. Where's the word coming from? right here and thus says the Lord God to these bones thus says the Lord God to these bones behold I I Lord God I will cause breath to enter you that you come to life you come to life. This is the message that when you know that you are the body of Christ and when you know that, that you have a purpose and a calling, you raise up and you say, not on my watch, not on my watch. For on my watch, with an apostolic anointing, you speak to the mountain and it will be removed. You speak to those dry bones and they will come to life. And I will put, this is Christ in me, speaking. I will put sinews. What are sinews? They're tendons. What is this though for the body of Christ? See, we've taken this whole thing here and we're looking for, okay, we take those bones, you know, let's say we have a whole mess of um of uh, just bones. I mean, you've seen you've seen the pictures to where you have have just a, a slew of historicalness of skulls and and bones all in um, on top of each other. And now, and in fact, there's such a mess in there of what skull goes to which bones that that we've taken this message here and made it sound like Ezekiel is speaking to the natural flesh when we refer to sinews and when we refer to flesh. But there's more to this because everything about the Bible, everything about the scriptures is spirit. What is this meaning to us from the spiritual realm that we can activate into our natural world for today? I hope you come back. I'm going to continue on this into a part two and explain a little bit more. In the meantime, I have this book here and I've got loads and loads of copy, copies by a wonderful um, 
rabbi. Uh, I refer to her as a rabbi, um, um, Bacha Wooden. And with this, if you have a heart for Israel, if you have a heart for, for knowing what is the Bible really saying, especially as you read further into Ezekiel 37 of, of about the house of Jacob, the house of Israel, it ex she explains so much into clarity and a pathway of understanding the scriptures of things that need to take place in the natural for us to understand in the spiritual world of what's going on. So I have oh probably about 25 of these books. And if you will send me a donation, I will be happy to, of, of any size, um, of, uh, well, I say any size, I do have to pay for the postage of sending it. So let's say of um, uh, $10, $15 or more uh, to www.icministry.org. There's a place on there that you can make donations and uh, send me your address and I will be happy to mail you one of these books. I don't know if you can get them in print anymore. Um, I don't think so. But it will really, really explain to you who is Israel today. Uh, in the meantime, please come back and I will finish with what I want to show you of the true body of Christ that is forming in this world. God bless you and I'll see you next time. Bye -bye.